And that is the person that God said, you know what? They're perfect. They're perfect for the lineage of my son, Jesus Christ. Do you know why they're perfect? Because they're exactly the kind of people that Jesus is coming to save. Let's put them in the lineage. That's who he's coming for anyway. If you're sitting, look at me, look at me, church. You pay attention. <laughs> if you're sitting here today and you feel like you've out the grace of God, there could not be a bigger lie in the pit of hell ever. Because whatever you have done is forgiven by a God who can love infinitely above what you could ever ask or think. That is the truth. His grace is sufficient, and it will cover your sin. I don't care what you've done, who you've done it with, or where you did it. Jesus loves you, and he's here to rescue you. Will you let him? You know, there's two people in the story that I mentioned early on in this series. They're sisters, sisters-in-law, or whatever that would be in sister talk. They both married brothers. One is Orpah. Orpah was on the road with Naomi and Ruth. And Orpah was faced with the same choice as Ruth. She had all the same information, same experiences, she had the same uh, audience that day. She was in the same proximity to Naomi as she was saying, don't go, don't trust, don't follow, don't, don't stay here. And Orpah chose not to follow Naomi. And I preach every week in a church to men and women who hear the same information as everybody else who understand the same truth about the Savior of the world and for whatever reason continually choose to not follow him. I need to be honest with you. If I'm describing you, your staying in Moab, as it were, is the biggest bad decision you've ever made in your life. You see, we were created with one purpose, that was to be with our God and when sin came into our life, we were separated from him. And it's only by faith in Jesus Christ that we can ever be reconnected to the God who made us. And every day you sit in this room and you fold your arms and you sit there and say, that was neat. That was interesting. That could work. But you never step out in faith and put your faith in Jesus Christ. You are, you are <laughs> by your own choice, missing out on your very purpose in living. Are you Orpa? If you're Orpah today, can I invite you to become Ruth? Because Ruth, upon hearing all the same stuff and faced with the same decision, she said, you know what? By faith, I'm going to step outside of this life that I live. And I'm going to walk towards this God of Naomi. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow him no matter what it brings. And it's interesting to me that in the redemption story here in chapter 4, there were three women that uh, had the opportunity to, to benefit from that redemption. When Boaz redeems Ruth, whose lands does he buy? He buys Elimelech's lands, he buys Malon, Ruth's husband's lands, and he buys Kilion's land. Who was married to Kilion? Orpah. When they were handing out all the blessings, all the rescue, all the redemptions, when the bailout plan came for these ladies, there was only one girl absent. And because she was absent, she never got to experience the rescue. How long will you remain absent? I believe fully in all my heart that there's someone today who needs to follow in faith their Savior, Jesus Christ. Brad's going to come out right now. We're going to sing a song we all know. It's about amazing grace. And it's because of God's amazing grace to us through Jesus Christ that we can experience God's rescue. The question is, 
Will you take it? Are you redeemed? We're going to bow our heads for a second. Like I said, we don't do this every week. If you come here, you know we don't. But I can't help but believe that there's someone who needs to get up out of a chair and walk on down here and find Jesus. So I'm going to pray for those people. If you're here this morning and you're one of those folks who has found Jesus, you need to pray with me for those folks. Pray with me that they'll switch chairs and put their faith in Christ. Let's pray. Hey, God, as I sit here this morning, I'm going to ask people to make a decision, to have the courage to to move away from the life that I've always lived and put their faith in you. I know from my own experience, God, how uh, disconcerting and scary that can seem and feel, but I trust, Lord, that that's your purpose in every man and woman's life. So as we uh, sit here this morning, my prayer is that you will move in the hearts of men, in the hearts of women, in the hearts of uh, students and children who need to follow you. And would you please bring them to the front, God, so that they can receive you by faith and make that decision to follow you. That's our prayer. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray it. Amen.